Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. Before I get to our guest here today, I'd like to remind everyone that if you enjoy this content, please give a like and subscribe down below. We greatly appreciate it. We have Mindy Sue on the podcast with us. She's 47. I just thought I'd throw that out there because she looks not a day over 27, but that's another benefit of working out. But she's an MPC figure competitor. She's also a personal trainer, and she's coming to us all the way from Ohio. But most importantly, she's our current guest. Mindy, thank you so much for being on the show. You're welcome. So why don't you give us a little bit of a backstory on what inspired you to adapt that healthy and fit life? Okay. Uh, growing up, my father, actually, I have four brothers, and my father was always a, a health advocate. Mm-hmm. He used to run marathons, so we used to go and watch him run all the time. He was in Parks and Recreation, so he used to be play- playground leaders at mm-hmm. different recreation centers. So my brothers and I used to go him- go with him in the evenings. Mm-hmm. And we were in gymnastics. My brother did wrestling. And then we just, it was, it we were always around it. And we grew up playing sports. I played baseball with my brothers um, all the way up until my eighth grade year of high school, or sorry, middle school. <laughs> and then in high school, I decided, well, my father convinced me to try out for the high school softball team. Mm-hmm. So I decided, because I wanted to try out for the baseball team, mm-hmm. but I decided to go ahead and try out. So I made the varsity as a freshman. For softball, but yeah, growing up playing basketball, softball, you name it, that's what we did. Mm-hmm. Um, I had an older, uh, my grandmother who passed away a couple years ago at a hundred. Wow. She used to come out and um, actually she used to play basketball with us. She played basketball in high school, mm-hmm. and so she lived behind us. And she would come out and you know on the weekends would come up to our house and we would play basketball. Mm-hmm. So again, growing up, it was something that was always part of my life. I played high school sports. I played college sports. I played basketball and I played softball. Then I started, and then I met my husband and he was a runner mm-hmm. and he got me into, into running. So I started running five Ks and then I started running marathons. So I ran marathons for about 10 years. And then after that, about four years ago, I had a bucket list. And one of my bucket list items was to do a bodybuilding competition. So I enlisted a coach, and the first thing my coach told me was I was not allowed to run marathons anymore. (laughs) So I, you know, it was hard for me Mm. to stop, but once I stopped, I didn't miss it. It was less on my body, actually. Mm. I haven't had injuries since then. So then I actually started the process of my first competition, and then did my first competition as a bucket list item, and then... After I got up on stage and went through the whole process, I'm like, okay, I really like this and I want to do more. So from there, that's, you know, again, four years of doing competitions. And, you know, I started a lot later in life, but it has been um, wonderful. I um, also actually was a, before I started becoming a trainer, for 20 plus years, I was a health and PE teacher. So actually last year, um, I was teaching high school health and PE. And so, Again, that active lifestyle, teaching students important ways, healthy ways to live because high school students, they have no idea. Oh, yeah. A lot of them have no idea what is good for them, like in the way of eating. It's like, it's I'm, crazy. So They are so lucky to have that metabolism still too, where they can get away with so many things. I mean, I'm 24, but I still miss that young, that youngerish metabolism where I could, you know, just right. eat whatever I wanted and get away with it. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. 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 So you mentioned that it being doing a bodybuilding show was on your bucket list. What really inspired that? Was that just something that you always were interested in and always thought like, hey, that might be fun to do? Yeah, well, a lot of people for years are like, Well, you should try one. Mm-hmm. You should you should do it. And so I'm finally I was at I was in the gym one day and one of the trainers was working with the guy. They were training and then they had gone into the studio and he was helping him with posing. And I'm like, you know what? I want to do one. I'm going to do one. So it's funny thing. I actually contacted the trainer through Facebook Mm -hmm. and we weren't friends or anything. And I had no idea who he was, but I I mean, I knew he was a trainer. So I contacted him through Facebook and, and said, listen, I'm not trying to be creepy or anything, but I saw you training somebody. Do you do competition? You know, do you coach for competitions? Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah. So we got, you know, we, we hooked up, we were able to get together. He did an assessment on me and then he, um, Basically, he was my coach for one, two, three, I think for about a year and a half or about two years, he was my coach. And then he was in the process of opening up his own gym. So he was, you know, obviously busy with what he was doing. And and so I decided to kind of branch out and I found um, a coach through a mutual friend who actually lives out in Oregon. So she's been my coach now for probably about 
two and a half, three years. And she's wonderful. She's a, a wonderful lady. She's also a competitor. She's an IFBB pro and does uh, physique. Wow. So. Yeah. yeah, that's that's awesome. So when you were getting started, I mean, I always like to make the comparison where if you were to walk into a gym with 100 people, there's 100 different ways as to how people got into shape, whether it be for their dieting, their nutrition, how many reps they do, what exercise they do. There's so many little things that add up to the total package that then people end up seeing. Was that a struggle for you sort of realizing what worked best for your body? Because like I always say, if you were to go up to someone and say like, wow, you look amazing. What exercise do you do for this muscle group or what exercise do you do for that muscle group? What works for them 99% of the time isn't going to be as effective for you. Right. Well, I tell you what, what I saw result wise was basically when I started, when I changed my diet, not that I ate poorly before when I was running marathons, but I wasn't feeding my body the proper, basically I wasn't getting enough of what I needed. And so once I changed up, the way that I ate, I really saw a difference. When I was running marathons, I was, st I still had muscle, but it was very lean muscle. Mm -hmm. Once I obviously stopped running marathons and doing less cardio, I was able to keep on the weight, but because I was taking in more food, more, more than I needed, yeah. especially with the protein. I mean, I was, I didn't know, you know, it's like, <laughs> I was, I should have known, but I didn't know. Yeah. So that definitely just the food, food oh. made it a big difference in the change. And then, you know, through my competition, through prep, when my coach changed up my diet, it was crazy how my body changed through that process. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like they always say, like, it's like your nutrition is 80% of it or not even 90% of it. Some people go that high and like they always say, you know, like abs are made in the kitchen, stuff like that. I mean, right. 100, 100%. But what was, I mean, everyone always has that one body part that really takes off when they start training that they don't have to work as much. And then everyone always has that one body part that really struggles that they need to really, really focus on. What are those for you? My shoulders are probably, and arms are probably the easiest. Even again, when I was running, Lucky. Um, <laughs> those were the one, that was the one area that I never really like biceps and whatnot. Yeah. I never really had issues with it. I think legs are always I feel like I'm always doing legs, like abs and everything. They come in. Um, that, that's weird like, being a runner that you're always doing legs then too. Well, I was, yeah, I think, yeah. I mean, it, it, <laughs> it is, it's, I, I, again, I was lean. Yeah, now yeah. it's like trying to put on mm -hmm. a little bit more muscle on my legs and then just getting, to, getting them to competition ready. That's the last thing that I see is my mm -hmm. legs. Everything else, like upper body comes pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Abs will come pretty quickly. It's just the lower body that will always be the last thing to, to, uh, you are happen. preaching, you are preaching to the choir because I mean, my back is the one thing that's really, really where I can train back once a month and it will yeah. still look, it'll still look great. But yeah, everything else, I mean, legs too. I mean, I, you know, I'm six, three, so that also doesn't help because, you know, I just automatically have those small legs, but yeah, I got to, you know, go yeah. put those into overdrive so that, <laughs> I mean, it, it's the things, you know, I got to do it. Cause I don't want to be that one guy who has a big upper body. And then they look at him and they're like, Oh my God, what are those twigs that you got working down below? So right. yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a, it's a blessing and a curse, I guess at the same time exactly. yep so i always sort of like to ask what was your first prep like because a lot of people don't realize i mean a lot of the guests that we have on you know were overweight or they weren't they didn't have such the the, the great background that you had when it comes to you know already having that really good you know healthy and fit lifestyle aspect yeah when you knew the training so but even still going from that runner lean to then going into that stage prep i mean that's a huge huge difference what was that prep like for you because a lot of people don't realize that you take your nutrition and, you, and you're working out just to an extreme level where it's just you know, you got to be focused on it all the time. You got to work right. out all the time. What was that experience like for you the first time? Well, because I didn't really know what to expect. I mean, I was pretty open for whatever. So it what I mean, honestly, it wasn't a bad prep for me. I know people struggle, especially with the diet portion of it, that I have no issues with the meal plans and whatnot. My coach gives me tells me what to eat and I'm on it. And I typically don't. So the first probably the first one that I did, I followed it to a T, mm -hmm. which now, you know, when I, especially with the food, you know, I might have something here and there cause I know it's not going to hurt me, but mm -hmm. it's like when I was, and I know I drove my family crazy the first prep because we would go out to dinner. I'm like, Oh, I, I can't, I can't have that. You know, <laughs> yep. it's like, I can only have this and this cause I followed my plan. Cause being my first show and prep, I wanted to make sure I did it completely correct. Mm -hmm. So I realized that was the one thing, again, not knowing what I was getting into. And I'm one that I'm going to follow things. I'm going to follow through and I'm going to follow them to a T. But then after the first one, the second one, I'm like, okay, I, I can ease off a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have to be so intense and so tunnel vision when I do it. So that was 
that was probably what I think with the first show going into it and the process is just being so focused on it and almost tunnel vision with it. Absolutely. Like a lot of people don't realize the, the struggle that goes into it where, like you said, you can't go out and eat with your family as much. I mean, you'll be the one person that's just like, Oh, I'll just have the water right there. I'll have like maybe like the salad or something like that where it's just, yeah, it's such, I, I mean, you really just have to focus on that entirely. And that's just an entire process that really, really takes a lot out of you. But I also like to ask, you know, if you were to pull the general public, you'd get a small singular percentage of people that would basically be willing to go up on stage in a bikini and pose for people. It's something that a very few amount of people would do. Was that something that you find? I mean, I know you put it on your bucket list, but was that still something that you really had to work up a lot of courage to do? Because like I say, you know, a lot of people wouldn't be willing to do that. Or was it at the point too where you were just like, you know what, I worked my butt off for this amount of months or this amount of weeks, and I'm just going to go up there and show it off. What was that process like for you? Um, I was terrified. Mm -hmm. um, that is, I'm not one to be in front of people mm -hmm. to begin with. I don't like to talk in front of people. I mean, I do it with, I did it with students, mm -hmm. but that was a little different because yep. I wasn't in my bikini. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, um, I was, I was, I was extremely nervous mm -hmm. about doing it, but again, it was a kind of like facing my fears and mm -hmm. getting up on stage in front of people. And then on top of that, being in a suit and heels, cause I typically don't wear yep. heels. I'm always in tennis shoes. So yeah, I mean, but, but once I got up there again, once I got up there and on stage by myself, it was like, it was thrilling mm -hmm. and it was like, oh my, oh my gosh, this is like amazing. Mm -hmm. And so, again, that's why I decided I got to do it again. Well, absolutely. And you kind of elaborated on it. But I, the one question that I love to ask all my guests, whether they be bands or health and fitness guests, is I ask my band, you know, what is that feeling like being on stage and performing live? And then that also applies to, to my guests, the health and fitness guests. What is that feeling like for you when you get to step on stage and show off all of that hard work? Does it really make everything worthwhile? It, it, it's, yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's like the celebration of, of the process. That's how I look at it. I don't look at it to get on stage and say, okay, I want to get first place. It's more so this is my celebration. I've made it this far. Now it's time to celebrate and enjoy what I've done and show what I was able to do. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And now as if, if you can't tell, I mean, I'm a very pale individual myself. So I always <laughs> like I always like to ask, what was that like putting that tan on for the first time? What was that experience like? Because, you know, we get all so many guests on here that say, you know, like you see all you see muscles, you never even knew that you had muscles. Oh really, everything seems to pop out. What was that experience like? for yeah. you? Yeah. Well, being for the first time that I did it, I just remember going into it was in a it was in one of the hotels mm -hmm. and I go in and I'm getting sprayed down for the first time, mm -hmm. getting basically naked in front mm -hmm. of these women. And yeah. and and so, yeah, so and I'm and I'm standing with these women in front of fans yeah. and I'm like, holy crap, what is it? You know, it's like, I, you know, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's like you're super dark mm -hmm. and yeah, you, it's like you see, you see all these muscles that you didn't realize that mm -hmm. you had. You know, yep. that they were really popping because of the because of the tan. I always say you can really judge if someone's going to do really, really good if they look even that great without the tan on. Then you're like, OK, yeah, yeah this person's going to be unbelievable then with the tan on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So and, but, and also a lot of people don't realize, too. I mean, you have to be basically stationary the whole time that you have that tan on, because if you sit down on anything, you know, yeah. it's going to run. You do anything. I mean, you just basically, you know, you, you could basically just be a statue basically the whole time. That's the one thing right. that you can really get away with. And, you know, you can't for a lot of these, you can't like put deodorant on. So I always tell a lot of people, don't go backstage if you're at these shows. You might not like what you smell. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's true. I know. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. That's why I bring the awareness to it. So, yeah, I mean, 100 percent. That's one thing. But I mean, just, yeah, a lot of people just don't realize they just look at the compares with the tan. They don't realize all the stuff that they really have to sacrifice when they put that tan on just, right. just in order to look that in, in order to look that part. So, yeah, right. I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, more power to everyone that does that because, you know, it's something that a lot of people just don't understand. But now going to the fun part, what is your go to post show meal? What is a uh, cheeseburger and sweet potato fries? Yes. 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 Any specific restaurant that you like to go to or is it just anything um, that's in town? Any, anywhere, actually here in Columbus, we have, uh, it's called the flip side. Mm. I don't know if you guys have that out mm. in Minnesota or not, but it's a, um, it's a, I love that place. It's, yeah. they have the best sweet potato fries oh, and they yeah. have the best cheeseburgers. So, but if they, you know, if, if I'm somewhere mm. else, um, if I'm traveling and they don't have that, then mm. anywhere, anywhere where I can get cheeseburger and French fries. I was going to say five guys, burgers and fries is my favorite place. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I could go to that. Too. Oh my God. Yeah. Just, I'm probably going to have that actually later today. Cause I was planning on that. That's my cheat meal for the week, but yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, oh God. I'm just, getting, <laughs> I shouldn't have even mentioned that. Cause I'm getting watery. Just thinking about that. All right. Now, now I'm getting hungry. Yeah. I'm getting very, very, yeah, Absolutely. 
So yeah, that's cheat meals. I mean, they're, they're the best. But now this is probably my my favorite question to ask all of the guests that we have on because a lot of people don't realize. I've gotten so many of my friends who watch the show or people that I know that watch the show come up to me and say, wow, some of these bodybuilders that you have on, they must just look jacked and shredded, you know, 365 days out of the year. And that's not so. A lot of people don't realize that when you have gotten onto the stage, that look is not sustainable. I mean, you've sort right. of manip- you've manipulated your body through all the working out and exercising and nutrition into a look that is not sustainable. It's I always tell my the people that say that to me then, it's like, no, most of these people, just for that day, they look that good. And sometimes it's not even that whole day. That hour later, that they, they could get a little bit more bloated or – you know, all the things that could happen, happen to them. And a lot of people put on weight even that night. And then the week's coming, they put on weight. Was that a difficult thing for you to sort of mentally adjust to the fact that like this look that I've worked on months upon months to look, to look this great is not sustainable. I am going to have to put on weight. Was that a struggle for you at all? Um, maybe just a tad mm-hmm. when I started. Yeah. When I started putting a little bit on, um, Again, just being because I've always been so lean. Mm-hmm. But then I got to a point where I actually kind of like it when I have a little, I've got more curvature, I guess, to mm-hmm. my body than than when I am. I mean, I, I like my show look. Mm-hmm. But again, like you said, it's not something that you can sustain for a long period of time. It's just not healthy for your body to be like that for so long. Absolutely. And plus, people always say, like, they don't realize when these people are this, are this like, lean down or whatever. I mean, you're not going to get the best thing out of life, too, because a lot of people, I mean, you get cranky, you can get really, really irritated. And especially like a lot of people, the cold, especially being up in a colder climate, you're not going to want to be that lean, right. especially when it gets that cold out because you get colder really, really quickly. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, there's so many more things. I mean, it's great for the show day. But, yeah, there's some people that are that are able to, you know, pull that off, especially guys. Guys have an easier time of it, I think, when it comes to maintaining somewhat of that show look for a little bit longer. But that's just because, you know, the, right. the lower body fat that they can get naturally in the testosterone that they have but but yeah i mean it's one of those things too where a lot of people just don't realize because sometimes you'll see a, someone who does compete in the gym and you won't even know that they compete because right. they'll be in the yeah. offseason they'll be like oh that's just a, that's just an average person who might just be a little bit more muscular than anyone else but nope you see them when they go on stage and you're like oh wow that's that's awesome so i mean i always love to point that out because so many people sometimes when they see these bodybuilders and on like if they see them in person just walking down the street they're like oh uh-huh. they don't look anything like they do on instagram so then it's yeah. just like well exactly. buddy that's that's everyone. So, you know, <laughs> absolutely. And now, I mean, probably my favorite myth and stereotype to bust. It's gotten better on Instagram the last five years, I'd say, just because of all the exposure that it's gotten. But when it comes to women and weights, there still are so many women that believe that if they touch one weight, they're just going to hulk out and gain 50 pounds overnight magically into that. You know, I always say, if any woman does that, I will pay them thousands of dollars to be my personal trainer because, <laughs> because right. they have found the secret and I want to know from them how they did it. But I mean, obviously it's not true, but did you right. ever have that fear? I mean, being a runner going into the, I know you want to do it for bodybuilding, but do you ever have that fear right. like, oh, I don't want to get too big. And even if you never had that fear, what is your main response to that being a personal trainer now? Well, funny story is I had a, um, I personally never felt like that, that I was going to get big, but funny story the other day with a, a woman that I started training, that was the one thing she said, she goes, I, cause she doesn't really, she never really did weights. Mm-hmm she'd do cardio. And I said, I'm a bodybuilder. And when I, you know, and I had my t-shirt on my, my work clothes. So you couldn't really, I'm like, but I, I'm not bulky, you know, I'm not huge. Mm -hmm. I physically cannot get huge. Obviously if I take something, Mm -hmm. yeah, then I can get huge. But, and, and that's, that was the one, you know, trying to explain to her that it's okay to lift Mm -hmm. weights. It's not going to, if anything, it's going to make you stronger. So she's like, I, she, I think I, I, convinced her mm-hmm. that it's okay to oh. um to go ahead and it's okay to lift weights absolutely and like i always say like everyone yeah just look at her does she look like the drawing the rock johnson or any of those guys and it's like she's been working out for like heavily for like four years now it's so insane that they i mean that there's still this myth i mean i always love to tell the funny story when i was in college and you know getting bigger and stronger one of my good friends she would always say like brian you're going to the gym i really want to go and work out with you she'd be you know Every single college girl at at my gym, other than two, who would just be on, there would be a, a, a the floor below would be the where the weights were, and then the track right. above would be all where all the cardio machines were. You know, right. it would be ninety percent women up there just on the cardio machines. I'd go up there just for my cardio before I worked out, but yet. Yeah, 
I finally convinced her when I said, look, the amount of weight that you carry in your purse when we go out to clubs or we go out to get something to eat <laughs> weighs more than a lot of the dumbbells in the gym. And you're exactly. not gaining you're not gaining any muscle from lugging that thing around all the time. Right. So that really convinced her. And it's just one of those things where just convincing them to walk into the gym and just see like, oh, this is not so bad at all. I mean, I'm not going right. to you know, put on all this muscle. And it's just, yeah, I mean, that's one thing that I really, really, really can't stress enough is that that's not yeah. going to happen. And yeah. just all of the hard work that needs to take place, you know, absolutely. Right. And plus, like I said, weightlifting is one of the best things for you, especially metabolism wise. If you want to be able to, you know, eat more. I mean, that's that should be a trainer's go to thing for a client. Exactly. Is just be like, you exactly. want to be able to eat more, or eat better food and still not be able and still not gain weight. I mean, that's just. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's absolutely, absolutely one of the, the go to things that I really, really think should be stressed. But now, I mean, you're in Ohio. I'm in Minnesota. Minnesota can get a little bit colder, but Ohio is still a very, very cold climate. Now that we're entering the season, you know, where it's going to get very, very cold and where it's, you know, you're not like we said now here, we only get like nine hours of sunlight a, a day. Uh -huh. But what are some tips and tricks that you use in order to still get that workout in on days when, you know, it's like, it may be like 10 degrees or zero degrees where your body's just basically tell you, let's stay inside right now and just watch Netflix or sit by a fireplace. What are some ways right. that you sort of trick your mind into saying like, no, I need to get this workout in today? Well, for me, it's, it's, it's almost automatic. Mm -hmm. Like it's, I don't like it's, it's, it's almost therapy for me mm -hmm. to go. So that's something that I know that I'm going to feel better if I go. So for me, I'm going to go to the gym or if I'm home, there's always something I can do here. So mm -hmm. if I, if I don't want to go to the gym, I mean, we've got a, we've got equipment downstairs in the basement. If I want to walk around the house doing squats, I can walk around the house doing squats or lunges or whatever. So I'm going to get my body moving every day. Oh, every yeah. day. So I mean, and I'm lucky too, where I have a gym equipment downstairs. I mean, I'm still at home with my parents for the next few months until I, I'm at UPS. So then I think I'm going to be transferred to a different place. So then I'll move to wherever I'm transferred. But yeah, I totally understand that. And I'm lucky. So like 75% of my workouts are at home, but I always yeah. tell people during the winter too. I mean, it's like, other than Minnesota, where I mean, I play pond hockey all the time. It's like, what else are you going to do when it's that, when it's that cool? It's like, especially if you're older, it's like, what, what are you going to do? There's nothing to do during the winter. I mean, it's like, so you might as well go and get a workout in and, and, st and save some time. I mean, and plus, you know, drinking all that eggnog that people are going to be drinking in the oh, coming weeks yeah. and, and everything like that. I mean, you got to have, you got to have something that you got to, you got to burn right. off those calories. But what are some ways, especially now that we do have, I mean, we already had a holiday with Thanksgiving, but we do have, you know, the big, the big two, I mean, we have one of the big three basically out of the way I like to call Thanksgiving, you know, New Year's uh -huh. Eve and Christmas, the big three. But now that we have two of the big three still approaching. What is your diet going to be like then? Do you allow yourself to sort of binge on, you know, like Christmas Eve, Christmas Day? Or is it one of those things where you still like to keep a, a strict diet? Or does it really depend on yeah. if you – does it really depend on if you're preparing for a show too? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I intuitively eat. I don't overeat. I don't binge. I don't – like I'm not strict. So if I want to have a cookie or whatever or pie or whatever during Christmas, then I'm going to have it. And then once I start getting into prep mode for my shows – then that's when my diet kind of changes and then I get a little bit more tuned in. But Christmas and, and New Year's, again, I'm not, if I'm not prepping for anything, then I'm going to, um, I mean, I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to go crazy because I really don't. I mean, I still eat pretty clean, but if I want something, I'm going to have it. Oh yeah, we have a tradition in our family where we have crab legs on Christmas Eve, and yeah, just thinking about those, oof, so, <laughs> so good. But then we also, um, we're my dad's side is we're basically all Norwegian on my dad's side. So then we have like lutefisk, which is just you know the worst tasting fish ever, but I still have it every year. Where oh just, yeah, ugh, I I hate it, but it's but we have it's tradition. So then we'll right. get some lefse in there too. So then yeah, we always we always have that. So, yeah, I mean, it's always important to, you know, to enjoy yourself during the during the, the holidays, especially especially on Thanksgiving where, I mean, you know, you got to fill up your belly. And I always like to say, you know, there's always a challenge and for me where I always try to do at least one crunch after I filled up on my on my Thanksgiving meal. And every okay. year I'm not able to do it, not able to do it. <laughs> my stomach just gets too sore where I'm just like, OK, can't can't right. do it can't do it but now probably two of my favorite questions that i love to ask all my guests on the show is that i mean for me at least when i started you know get bigger and stronger in college the one negative thing that i found out is that you're going to get asked to move a lot of people's furniture you're going to get asked to open a lot of pickle jars i mean like i said i'm still at home with my parents so every time they come home with groceries i basically lift the car into the driveway and i carry everything in for them uh-huh have you found that because of the way that you look i mean especially on days when you're not like when like you said when you're not like wearing like a long sleeve shirt or wherever but days when right. people can really tell that you do work out and that you compete do you find that people then just assume that you can do do favors for them <laughs> 
Um, not, not too, too bad. Okay. But the one thing that I do notice that like when I'm at the gym and you know, if I'm not, um, cause I, I work out, like I've been a member at the gym that I, that I work at now. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been there since 2001. So mm -hmm. I pretty much know mm -hmm. everybody yep. for the most part. And so then when I started working there, talking to some of the older gentlemen about, mm -hmm. you know, training and they're like, like, Oh no, no, no. We see how you train. You're going to kick our butt. I'm like, no, just because I train that way. doesn't mean I'm going to, you know, and I yeah. look this way, it doesn't mean I'm going to do that to you. Yeah. But that's kind of the thing where it's like, Mm -hmm. They see me and they're like, oh, my God, she's going to kill me if she trains mm -hmm. me. So that's yeah. kind of like, I don't know, a stereotype or whatever with that. Uh, oh, but yeah. in the way of like, you know, sometimes people ask me to open up jars. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, like I'm and like I also said, going back to me being six, three, two, that doesn't really help because I could be wearing a sweater and people would still assume that I could do favors for them to and to just <laughs> see me walk down the streets. So like even last summer, every weekend, people would text me because my friends are still at that age, too, kind of like with me where they're moving out, where they're texting me right. and I'll be like, hey, you know, I got it. I'm moving out. Can you help me move this couch or this chair or whatever? And it got to a point where I was just like, OK, as long as you let me get my workout in before, because I don't want to get too sore work, lifting basically your entire house for you that I can't work out then later in the day. And I said, as long as it's not the day that I'm training back either, then I'll help right. you out. Otherwise you're gonna yeah. have to delay it by another day. And then I'll come and help you out <laughs> because I'm not, I'm not sacrificing that, but yeah, 100%. And kind of going back to like what you said too, where one of the reasons why I love to have, you know, especially women when I have the body goes on, I mean, I have guys too, but especially I love having, having the women on is because especially society wise, people sometimes don't tend to see past the muscle where they just see a muscular woman. They don't really see the person behind it. So that's why right. I love to have people come on and share their stories because then people just realize like, Hey, there's a person deep down behind that. Cause like you said, the guys in the gym, they might see and be like, Oh, we don't want to train with you. Cause you might kick our butts or stuff like that. Where it's like, you know, I mean, I know that they're just joke goofing around right. and joking yeah. around, but you know, it's still, you know, deep down, it, there still is a little bit of that, that I, that I hear all the time. So, I mean, 100%. And now my favorite question to ask, I mean, again, this is a multi-million dollar idea before I ask it for anyone out there but when it comes to clothes for fit women your clothing options can be limited I always like to say you know like if you have big shoulders or big traps dresses yep. are, dresses are out of the picture for you jeans are another thing that we hear of all the time where that that can be very very hard for you so what are some ways that you sort of compensate for the fact that your clothing options can be limited um I have go-to clothes that I typically will wear. I mean, I wear pretty much the same stuff all the time. Like pants, there's a certain type of pant that I know that I can, like jean-wise, mm -hmm. I know I can fit into. Mm -hmm. um, I have a pair of pants that I've owned now for probably about 10 years wow. because they fit me perfectly. Mm -hmm. uh, but my issue, like, yeah, my issue with pants is that it may not fit me mm -hmm. in my hips and my glutes, but then it's really big in my waist. So yep. that's, but I, I'm able to find pants. I've got pants that I know that will fit me. And then likewise, it's, it's tough with tops and dresses. Mm -hmm. Um, if it is a sleeve, if it has sleeves, it it's, yeah, it's, yeah. so there are certain things that I know I can buy that I'll be okay with. And then there are other things where I will buy and it's, it fits me everywhere. If it's a small it fits me everywhere, but then in my shoulders, it doesn't yep. fit. Yep. So yeah, that is, that's the one thing that I do struggle with at times. Believe me. And like I said, I mean, I've had two people that do fashion on here and I told them every time I said, I have a multi-million dollar idea for you. Don't be an idiot. Cash in on it. There's so many people that are waiting right. for that to happen. Exactly. So again, anyone out there who's listening, cash in on it. It's a multi-million dollar idea. There's so many out of the hundred health and fitness guests people I've had on, you know, 99% of them are willing to buy whatever you have to sell. Exactly. So, so get right. on it. You are going to make a lot of money. 100, 100%. But now we go to our favorite part of the podcast. Well, at least my personal favorite part and the audience personal favorite, where we're going to do sort of a getting to know you with Mindy Sue style, where I'm going to ask her about a dozen health and fitness questions. And we're going to see how she stacks up to all the other other guests that we've had on the show so for our first question what is your go-to workout song at the moment oh my um anything from fallout boy Ooh. uh champion i love champion from fallout boy believe it or not that is the first fallout boy we have ever heard on nice. here. so yeah fallout boy that's something i mean i thought that we would probably be reversing roles because i love the old school 80s cheesy music where i mean i'll have you know all the 80s pop music that's my go-to where like the rocky four soundtrack is my oh, favorite yeah. thing to listen to just all the that cheesy cheesy stuff but also i have like my metallicas and my iron maidens that are for you know especially like my leg days because i know it's going to be a, a hell to go through so i gotta get i gotta get some hard Hard, heavy metal music but I have a problem like if I like I said my gym downstairs I work out at like 75% of the time but when I do go to a normal gym 
let's say I'm doing like lat pull downs or something like that. I got to wait for the beat to drop. So for like 30 mm-hmm. seconds, I might just, just be standing there with this. And then I have so many people come up to me sometimes and they'll be like, is everything all right? Did you like hurt your back or something like that? It's like, <laughs> nope, just waiting for the beat to drop on my, on my phone or on right. my uh, music. So yeah, that's definitely, that's definitely one thing that I'm more known for is the guy that sometimes might be like about to do a bench press and he has like the weight ready to go or he's like right. gripping it off, not off the bar, but then it's like, he's wait. So yeah, everyone kind of knows that now where it's like, just leave him be. Everything's fine with him. Unless you hear him like screaming, everything's fine. <laughs> so, yep. And now for our second question, out of all the celebrities on the planet, if you could train with any celebrity, who would it be? Oh my. Um, Probably one of the Blue Jackets. Ooh. <laughs> I know they're, I mean, they're hockey celebrities. Um, okay, you're talking to a Minnesotan here, so anytime you mention hockey, okay, that's, yeah. you, you got, so yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that, that's totally awesome. I mean, I have, so the high school that I actually went to I, is in my hometown right here where I'm talking to you, is produced m- more NHL players than any other high school in the country. Okay. Uh, for public high schools, at least. We're not going to go private because that's that, that's cheating. That's not fair. But <laughs> for public schools, at least. So, like, guys like, um, I don't know if you, well, like, Zach Parisi was going to go to that high school, but then he went to a private academy. Like, he grew up okay. in the same place. And just other other guys like that. So, yeah, I mean, hockey is so ingrained in, in, in the state. So, yeah, you mentioned hockey. Where, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. So, yeah, one of the Blue Jackets, yeah, 100%. That'd yeah. be cool. I well, mean, on a side note, both my kids are hockey players. Oh, yep. That's great. What positions do they play? Uh, they both play defense. Ooh. See, that's the undervalued aspect is the defense. No one likes to give credit to the defenders, but you, know, uh-huh. I mean, you have great defenders. That's the best. I mean, one of my neighbors, too, lives two houses down. He plays for the University of Alaska. He's he's a defenseman, too. So, yeah, I mean, totally. The defenseman and plus playing pond hockey all year round like I like to do. Or not right, all year yeah. round, but especially during the winter. I mean, that's my cardio during the winter. I do that like three okay. days a week. So, you know, that's how I get my cardio in. It's Definitely. the best form of cardio by far because, I mean, you know. You get to have fun right. while doing it. But now, out of all the celebrities on the planet, if you could train any celebrity, who would it be? Oh, God. <laughs> um, gosh, I don't know. Um, hmm. That's a tough one. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, kind of going back to your hockey thing. So if you can see right there. That was uh-huh. that was where I got I was I was this was two nights ago. I was traveling down the ice with the puck and then some guy clipped me with his stick right in the right in the thumb there. I swear to God, it wasn't a fight, everyone. I didn't get into a fight, a <laughs> hockey brawl. But yeah, I got clipped right in the thing. So I saw that because I, I work at UPS for night. So usually during the day. So yeah, lifting packages that night was kind of rough on me. But, you know, right. we pulled through. But yeah, I gotta say for our for our answers for training celebrities, a lot of people are answering like Kevin Hart's or Ellen DeGeneres. But I always say to that, like I always say to that. No, because first of all, you're not going to be able, excuse me, you're not going to be able to get a workout in because they're just going to make you laugh the entire time. You're going to get, you're going to get the best ab workout of all time. You know, don't, don't get me wrong on that, but it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, you gotta, you gotta find celebrities where you're actually going to do that stuff with, but yeah. All right, The Rock. The Rock. I would love to train The Rock, yeah. Oh, come, you you would train, The Rock would train you, let's be (laughs) honest. Yeah, but that'd be hilarious. You had to see like, Rock, I want to see if you can bench this or whatever. (laughs) Yeah, but yeah, Dwayne The Rock. Right. Thank you. Thank you for saying that for this question, because for our other question out of the, all the celebrities you could work out with, 90 percent of our guests have said Dwayne The Rock Johnson. So I've almost gotten right. to a point where I've almost wanted to say other than Dwayne The Rock Johnson, if you could work <laughs> out with any celebrity, who would it be? But because I always like to say, I mean, we'll get into this earlier, but time is a huge thing that a lot of trainers that we talk to here where it's like, oh, I don't have enough time to get my workouts in. We all have the same 24 hours except Dwayne The Rock Johnson, how he's able to get all those movies out and do all that stuff while still right. maintaining that lifestyle. I mean, he's got to be on 27 hours at least. Oh, He's, I wouldn't doubt it. He has to have some sort of secret. I wouldn't, yeah, like you said, I wouldn't doubt that one bit. But now going on to our next question, what is one item that you always need to have in your fridge? Um, Almond butter. Ooh. Okay, so this is weird because that's the second time we've heard it, but the guest that we had just prior to you yesterday said almond butter as well. Okay. So I don't know, maybe there's some... Maybe there's some trend going on where with almond butter. I'll definitely have to check that out. I've never had almond butter in my life, so oh, it's quite tasty. Yeah, I'll mind. Well, yeah, yeah. So hopefully, yeah, I'll have to give that a try. But now, what is one thing that people who follow you on Instagram would be surprised to know about you if they met you in person? Um, one thing that let's see, maybe that I that I was a marathon runner that I did ten marathons. Yep, that would probably be one of those things. I mean, my girlfriend that I that I'm in a relationship with right now, she is a marathon runner and she is I mean, 
I, I love you, sweetie, but she's batshit crazy for doing all that stuff. She, <laughs> she, uh, she, I mean, there'll be times where she'll be like, yeah, I, I, we're, it'll be like in the winter where it's like zero degrees and she's like, yeah, I'm going for like an eight mile run. And I'm like, are you, yeah. cra- are you crazy? Like what? It's like, no, don't, don't do that. It's like, I'm okay. I'm going to stand by. And if you need me to pick you up, I mean, I'll come pick you up, right. but it's like, I'm not going out with you. I'm not crazy. So, but yeah, she does like half marathons where, I mean, and she's like, and she was like you were, where she's like, it's so lean where it's like just hugging her. It's like just hugging, just just a huge just like a tiny thing of muscle where it's just like oh my god right? it's, yeah it's 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 insane what the what those runners go to but i mean she absolutely loves it yeah. so i mean i could and you know like i say you know if that if that helps some of her pent-up aggression get out you know more power to her. I'll, right. I'll, I'll, I'll have her run all the time in the world then as long as <laughs> so yeah absolutely but yeah marathon that is that, yeah I mean, yeah that's... i can't see myself now like i used like 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 her i mean i would go out mm-hmm. It, it, it would be freezing. Mm-hmm. Now it's like, there is no way I'm, I, I get cold going out, walking my dog. There's yep. no way I'm going to go out and run for hours. Like I did back when I was doing them. Yeah. It's just that, that willpower in and of itself is just so impressive that I see that in her when I was like, okay, that's just insane. Like I would never have that willpower to do that. But yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things where you really just need to have that drive. But if you do, I mean, you can, you can accomplish anything, but now right. what is, what is the last TV show that you binge watched? The last TV show, um, that would be Law and Order NCIS. Dun dun. Yeah, I mean I I, I yeah. believe Law and Order Special Victims Unit, that's what it is. Oh see, so that that just proves how little I've known of the Law and Order universe. So I've never I mean, I've probably watched one episode of Law and Order my entire life, and that was when I think when I was at a friend's house and we were really, really bored and we were just flicking through the channels and that was on. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not at that age really where Law and Order is like the good thing. But yeah, once I think, you know, maybe like ten years down the road I might I might start watching that. But for me, I mean you, you might not believe this, but New Girl was the last TV show that I binge watched. My older brother recommended okay. it to me, and you know I, I enjoyed it a lot. I mean, I have so a lot of my a lot of some of my good friends are are teachers, so they remind me a lot of the main character who's a teacher, and she's like really spunky and really energetic. Right. And, you know, yeah. every time I watch that show, I was like, oh my god, I feel like I'm watching some of my friends now because they act just the same way. And oh, how are they able to get so spunky? I mean, they're on so they're on so much caffeine that you know you know obviously you could be that spunky doing anything with that just because right. they have to get up early in the morning. Which is, uh-huh. you know, ugh. I oh, mean, you, well, you understand that. Yeah, yeah, I know. You get that. But yeah, I mean, especially for them, they're being like kindergarten teachers. Well, I was just like, oh my God, that's just, but right. yeah, totally 100%. But now what is your favorite TV show of all time? Um, My favorite TV show. Oh, let's see. We don't really watch a lot of TV. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm always busy. We watch a lot of hockey, um, we watch, watch sports, but I will say that, um, with my kids, there's one show that we watch, and actually my husband watches it too. It's Bob Bob's Burgers. Oh, yep. <laughs> yeah, so that would be that would be a show that is is high up there. I know it's a cartoon, but it's hilarious. Oh, that, so that's what I, that that's might what be, I go to. That might be the most surprising thing for the people that follow you on Instagram to know is that you watch Bob's Burgers. You do not seem like the targeted demographic for a TV show like Bob's Burgers. So, well, yeah. Funny story. If you go further down into my into my posts, mm-hmm. you're going to see that I used to have um, a Tina phone case oh yeah <laughs> ever it finally got to the point where it, it was it was such a mess it was yep. so dirty i'm like i had to get rid of it but yeah so i had a, i had a phone tina phone case for for like a i don't know two years or something like that or a year that's awesome so yeah i mean for me it's either it's a, it's a tie it rotates either day between the office and friends oh I mean, yeah it's just you know it depends on either day you know what 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 my favorite one's gonna be but now what is a guilty pleasure movie that you enjoy um Oh, I don't really have a guilty pleasure movie. Don't really, I don't really watch movies that often. So I can't think, I really can't think. I mean, one of my favorite movies of all time that I used to watch all the time was, I mean, it's old. It was Pretty Woman. I mean, that's such an old movie, but I can't really think of one that. My guilty pleasure movie is older than your guilty pleasure movie. (laughs) Is yours? Okay. So again, I have to say this every time that I mention it, all my guy friends, close your ears. Don't hear, <laughs> for the next about forty five seconds. My guilty pleasure movie is The Princess Bride. Oh yeah, that's where, a good one. I mean, I could I have no all almost all the lines of that movie. I'll give you even a story. I was typing my thesis paper in college, and The Princess Bride came on, and I stopped my thesis paper to watch it for two hours. That just shows my dedication to that. That's my one movie. I mean, that's my ultimate date night movie. That's my ultimate. You know, anytime right. if that, it's one of those movies where if it comes on, I'm stopping whatever I'm doing, 
and Except, you're gonna watch it. Well, one time I had to do a podcast, and that's the one time where I, where I said, you know, work comes a little bit before, you know, <laughs> work comes before Princess Bride. So I, so you know, and I have it on DVD anyway, so it doesn't, really, really doesn't matter. Okay. But yeah, Pretty Woman. I'm not gonna lie, that's that's a good movie. I've watched Pretty Woman. And, oh yeah. Okay, so this brings up a freaky point that I that just really just. I don't know how we got into this, but I did my ancestry thing, or my grandpa did before. Where before that whole ancestry dot com thing came on, where you could trace your ancestry, my grandpa he did his own research and found out that we are um, direct descendants of one of the original people that came over on the Mayflower. And if you trace everything down the line, out of all the uh, out of all the other people that are related to us from that link, Richard Gear is actually like a, a a ninth cousin from us. So oh, when you wow. brought when you brought up Pretty Woman, I was like, oh yeah, that's with my ninth cousin Richard Gear. So you know, I've I've been wanting to contact him, contact him and be like, hey, put me in your will then for all that money that you have when you die. <laughs> put your ninth cousin in there. I mean, because right. we, we were we were we were part of the same genie. We're I mean, we were part of the same family about four hundred years ago. So I mean, it's like share the wealth but yeah that's the, i mean that's when you said pretty woman i was like oh wow that's right that's a, that's a weird well, coincidence yeah and a side note for there um trading someone a celebrity yeah. richard yeah definitely yeah. that would be one that i would definitely I train mean, the girls my age don't appreciate but he was a very handsome man or he still is a very handsome oh, man but back, handsome. oh yeah no? but i mean but i mean his prime like back in the day he was you know very very oh, yeah. i mean i mean I'm, I'm as straight as they come but i mean he was yeah he was a very very attractive <laughs> man i i will i will admit that 100 percent. right now, what is one th- i mean as you can tell i get my looks from him obviously you know so oh yeah, yeah but, so <laughs> if there was one thing that you could change about the sport of bodybuilding what would it be um one sport that it that it i think when it comes well i think with competitions anyways mm-hmm. that it is not Obviously, it's it can be very subjective, mm-hmm. and I know it's as a I would never want to be a judge because I think it would be hard. But I think it's also at times can be very political. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I think judging maybe would be one thing that would be nice to see um, uniform throughout everywhere mm-hmm. in the way of how they judge. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Because it's, it's like a lot of sports, too. I mean, especially like being a baseball player, a hockey player. I mean, the judges or the refs, you know, they can decide what happens. But you see all these times, too, where political, where it might be like someone who has even more followers on Twitter might win over someone who else just because they want the name brand recognition to come right. with when I mean there's so many stories that we could get into it but yeah that's definitely definitely a huge thing that's probably one of my answers too as well but now if you could go back in time and talk to the 18 year old version of yourself what would be the best piece of advice you would give her uh what would be the best advice to um not stress over the small things and to um gosh what else and not well. It just not worry about what everybody else is thinking and what everybody else is doing, and really focus more on me. And not yeah. That's, so that, mine. that's mine. That's mine one hundred percent too. So that's why I was clapping because we finally. I mean, we have someone on. I've had another guest that did that, but out of all the guests, I mean, to to bring that up, I I really really appreciate it because that's because that's mine as well. But now for our last question, and it's a really fun question. What is your favorite fashion trend of all time and least favorite fashion trend of all time? Oh gosh. <laughs> um, I saw your age and oh, I was like, okay, I have to include that question. Just, okay. Yeah. So my least favorite fashion trend, and I saw this a lot when I was teaching and I have, I mean, I have a daughter, 17 mm-hmm. year old daughter, almost 18 who never really got into the trend, which I'm so happy about. It's the, the, the shorts, the, yes. the high waisted, very short shorts, the Daisy the, Dukes basically. Yes. Yep. I hated those. Mm-hmm. And I always told my daughter, I'm like, I said, if you ever ask me for a pair of these, I'm never going to buy one, buy them for you. And she's like, well, that's okay. Cause I really don't want to wear those, which I was happy to hear. Um, and then my favorite trend, uh, I don't know. Can I, just, um, can I just say that those Daisy Dukes are some of my favorite things, but that's just because me being a guy. But, you know, I can totally understand for you why that's a different thing. Right, but, being a mom. And, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, being a mom, that's a little different, yeah. <laughs> right. And wearing them, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, I don't know, favorite I, – I don't really have a favorite trend. I mean, I – I don't know. I mean, everything obviously recycles. Everything comes yeah. back. I don't know. Yeah. I don't really have one. I got to say, well, being in Minnesota working, especially during this time of year, flannel is probably my favorite just because it is so okay. comfy. 
but I mean, also, I mean, I, my parents had their 27th anniversary a couple months back and we got to view their wedding photo or wedding uh-huh. video. We watch it every year around that time. And just the hair back then. Can I just oh, give a cool. shout out to the, I mean, they got married in 91. So that was still when mullets were still kind of king and almost, oh, all, yeah. my dad didn't have a mullet, thankfully, but all of his friends did. And just the thick manes that they had. I mean, it was just, I wish like if I, if one hairstyle could make the comeback, we had a guy in high school for football who grew out a mullet just as senior uh-huh. just as a joke. And then we have the hockey hair thing for in minnesota where yes. guys try to grow out their mullets where i mean right. that's just a whole thing but yeah just mullets I, I i'm a sucker for a good mullet i could never grow one out myself just because with the amount of the amount that i work out i just sweat so much i try to get my hair super long one time but then just all the sweating that it caused with my hair and i couldn't sleep at night because right. my, my head was not used to being that warm from having that much hair uh-huh. so yeah that's <laughs> yeah and then my least favorite i mean probably uh, fanny packs. I mean, my dad, oh, my dad yeah. used to, my dad used to rock a fanny pack in the late nineties and we still look at photos and that still scars me to this day where, I mean, I know they're making a mini comeback too. I mean, girls can pull off a fanny pack. Don't get me wrong, but guys, I mean, it, there's a, yeah, I mean, it's like, there's some things where you just don't want to tell your grandkids like, yeah, I wore that. Oh, you know, where yeah. The, yeah. My the, husband uh, and I both had, I think we both had fanny packs at, at some point in our early twenties. So I mean, they are resourceful, but they just just they just don't look good. That's the thing. Right, right. Well, I mean, believe me, some there were some pinches that I've been in where I was like, okay, if I just had my fanny pack where I could, you know, just like rifle through and find my ID or something like that, you know, that would that would be great. Don't get exactly. Me wrong. But yeah, so now we're done with the questionnaire. So now I got a few questions remaining. So now, okay. what really inspired you to want to become a trainer? Because I know that you did you know, a lot of PE and you are a PE teacher, but also, you know, that, and that can be a little bit different from being a personal trainer. What really inspired you to make that change? Well, um, it was a change that kind of was, um, it happened. It, I mean, I've always wanted to do it. It's something that I've, that I have been passionate about, but with teaching obviously, and it, it just never kind of happened. Um, and then I was, um, I, I, so long story short, I have, um, I've been, I, I, I've been dealing with depression pretty much my whole life. And, um, there came a point this year where basically it was, it was kind of, um, it all kind of exploded. Mm -hmm. So in the way of teaching it, it, everything that happened kind of, um, forced me to take a break from teaching. Mm -hmm. And when I took that break from teaching, Um, I decided, okay, so now's my opportunity to try personal training. Mm -hmm. Again, it's something that I'm very passionate about and I want to help people, um, physically, but also in, uh, uh, you know, mentally. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm a huge advocate on, um, mental health, mental wellness, obviously Mm -hmm. with the stuff that I've dealt with Mm my, um, years growing up and whatnot, Mm -hmm. um, so then I, yeah, so then I just decided that that was something that I was going to do. And, and I've been at it now for, I mean, I haven't been at it very long. I mean, it's maybe five weeks, six weeks oh, wow. that I've been doing it. So it's, we're it's, getting it right where she's fresh, everyone. <laughs> yes, I'm fresh. Yeah. Um, but again, it's something that I've, that I've done for so, I mean, I've done it. Mm-hmm. I've, I've lived the lifestyle for yeah. so long mm-hmm. that. Um, it was like, it was kind of a no brainer to, mm-hmm. to just go ahead and step into it. Yeah. Um, and it's, I go to work every day and I, and I, I tell people this all the time. It's like, I feel bad sometimes because I'm, it, I don't feel like it's work. Mm-hmm. I go in and I, it's such a rewarding experience. It's such a, just a fun experience and mm-hmm. I'm doing something that I'm passionate about. Mm-hmm. So it was, you know, it was a, it was a much needed um, career change for me. Mm-hmm. And I'm definitely in a much better place from changing and doing something different. And again, I'm using my degree mm-hmm. in a different way, but I'm helping, you know, I'm helping others. I feel like in a more personable way than I did when I was teaching. Oh, absolutely. And plus you don't have to get up so early anymore. Exactly. Five <laughs> thirties. I love well, it. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, if you're, if you're already, I mean, I, I do suffer from depression too as myself. And you know, if I had to get up that early too, that would just add on to everything too. So yeah, I was like, yeah. that, that's really one of those things too. 100%. But uh, where do you where are you a personal trainer at for anyone that might be in the Ohio area that might be? I am at Lifetime Fitness. It's at um, Easton. Easton. Okay. Love so yes. anyone, cause I know that we've had so many guests from Ohio on so that anyone that is listening, I mean, if you're in near the Easton area and you go to lifetime and you want to get a good, good workout in, I highly recommend going and seeing if 
you know, Mindy is there that day, or if she if she would be wanting to train you, I'm, I mean, she'd probably be more than willing definitely. to. But yeah. everyone in the, everyone in that area, definitely go and check her out. But Mindy, we cannot thank you enough for being on the show. I mean, it was really really great having you on. Is there anyone that you'd like to give a shout out to before we wrap things up? Um, well, I guess I want to shout out my family for being um, so patient and just wonderful um, mm-hmm. through everything that just the process of everything that I've done with my competitions and, and everything and really, um, being there for me. And then, um, obviously my first coach and then my current coach that I have now who has been, um, um, a key part in getting me where I am, um, for competitions basically. So, yeah. That's awesome. That's- so again, everyone, go and follow Mindy Sue. I'll leave her links down below on Instagram. And if you're in the Eastern area, go check out Lifetime. And again, thank you so much for being on the show. We really, really appreciate it. And this is Ryan Johnson, DD on the Spot, signing out. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.